Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are once again, ready to get started. Um, today is Wednesday, which means that we are one class away from wrapping up um, three weeks into these lessons. So for tonight, we are going to be um, discussing modifiers or as other people know them, uh, we're going to be talking about um, adjectives. Basically, that's what modifiers are. So we're going to be discussing them and learning uh, on the different ways in which they have to be ordered when we are creating sentences. So uh, just so we have it clear, as, as I said before, modifiers are basically adjectives. But the thing is that when we use adjectives, what they do is that they modify um, the noun in a certain aspect. For example, if you make the description of a house that is green, well, it is different from a house when you say that the house is yellow. So it is a modification in the description. That is why we sometimes refer to them as modifiers. Of course, modifiers as well as all adjectives can come in different um, presentations if we can refer to them as that. Um, for example, we can say that age is another kind of modifier. Size will be another sort of modifier. Sorry. Um, the shape that something has, the color that something has that has already been mentioned. Um, the origin, the material, the purpose. And uh, of course, if it has like, if you add a specific opinion about it, because um, of course, when we're describing something, we have the option to provide our own perception about it. And that is going to count as the opinion when it comes to um, to mentioning modifiers. Uh, now, apart from that, we are going to be also seeing some examples and creating some examples related to the topic. And uh, we have also the practice for tonight. Well, just so you guys know, right now, I was feeling a little sleepy. So I decided that the, the question for tonight is going to be related to that, related to not only sleeping, not necessarily sleeping, but related to dreaming. So we are going to be sharing what is our biggest dream, okay? Like what is that thing that you desire the most in your life? It can be something monetary, it can be something, um, I don't know, physical, it can be a relationship if you want. So what is the thing that um, you are basically aiming the most to achieve? And uh, of course, we expect to get a description about that thing. And, uh, you know, we can um, share as much as possible about the desires that we have. So let's see if we start by hearing from hmm, Lorena. In your case, Lorena, um, what will be your biggest dream? To be a healthy pe person, healthy people, person. Person, so yeah, know. that will work. Yeah, because um, I I want to live <laughs> long time. Uh, in my case, my fathers both died young, younger, and I would like to 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 be healthy to to live more than them and that, that's why i'm just always taking exams and being on the doctors and I, if i feel something strange i go out and i i ask for what can can be and i try to to eat healthy i have try to sleep the more i can and then i try to do everything that that they told me to me. all right that sounds great yeah sounds like you take good care of yourself and uh, I mean, it's a great purpose, you know, your purpose in life is to stay in life, basically. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a, an amazing purpose, actually, just to take care of yourself and to be as healthy as possible. I think it will be something that um, we all should aim at some point, at least. So nice. Very, how, how do they refer to this? Very honorable desire. It is a very honorable desire. So nice. Very nice. Thank you very much for sharing. 
All right, how about um, Claudia? In your case, Claudia, what is your, um, your biggest dream in life? Good evening, teacher. Evening. Um, my biggest dream maybe is to be able, my, able to develop that. Mm -hmm. The behavior, see? Develop my career. Mm -hmm. To um to have a better financial freedom, a more healthy. And um, I can to travel okay. <laughs> for the world sometime, right. some someday. All uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is nice yeah i mean that's nice uh basically your desire is to develop your, your career and uh or be able to develop or grow your career and become more independent of course we all desire to have that option you know being independent when it comes to monetary aspects because yes. uh, in that way we're going to be also able to manage our time and manage our um access to different things so yes. Sounds also, um, you know, like a very honorable desire. And, well, the idea that you have also of being healthy and at the same time having the chance to travel the world, that sounds amazing. So nice. Very nice. Very nice dream. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. How about um, Jenny? Jenny Sanchez. In your case, Jenny, what is your biggest dream in life? Hi, good evening. Actually, mm -hmm. I have feel it. Mm -hmm. I feel it most of the that my purpose. I only have pending traveling to to the world to to see new places. Only. Wow, that's great. Okay, so uh, you have done most of the things that you wanted in life. That is amazing. Um, and I mean, I feel like for many people that uh, um come from like uh the old school version of us or like the old school what Salvadorian thing, um having this chance of traveling the world is not like a necessity. It's not like um a commodity. But nowadays, as I have uh, also previously mentioned, we have access to more information we have access to um to like different perspectives and of course we have the desire of going to um to more places to different places so traveling the world is becoming more and more the desire of many of us um and it, it's great i mean i i feel like it's it's something amazing because we want to experience you know the place that we are living in and i feel like Another thing that we should also consider is also the fact that uh, we have to take care of this place, you know, in order for us to have the chance to travel it, we also have to take care of it. So that is also something that I try to inspire in you guys sometimes when it's possible. Just try to take care of your planet, try to not your planet, our planet, but try to take care of your spaces. That's what it's yours, you know, like your community, your house. Things that may be sold by you, try to do it. Because if we want to see the world, if we want to experience things in a, in a different culture, in a different place, of course, we have to start all by experiencing them, by taking care of our own place. Because you never know um, if, for example, there is one person on the other side of the world, maybe in India, maybe in Bangladesh right now, dreaming to come to El Salvador and then this person comes to your community and I mean everything is dirty everything is just um you know it's just bad maybe that person is not going to feel great so I feel like if you also have the desire to travel the world you will love it if you had the chance to see places as neatly as possible as order as possible and uh welcoming places for other people because we as we are becoming open as we have this desire of going to other places other people also have the desire to come to our places and i tell you this not only because of the 
um, the green movements because of the things that people say, you know, about take care of your of your um, garbage or um, recycle, reutilize and all that. It's not only because of that. It has to do with that, of course, but it's not only because of that. It is also because I have experienced myself um, such situation. In my case, one of the dreams that I used to have when I was younger was that I wanted to go to um, California. I wanted to go to Los Angeles. And I luckily had the chance, you know, to achieve that. I went to LA. Um, it was an accident to, in sorts. But yeah, I went to Vegas. And after I went to Vegas, one of my cousins, he picked me up. Well, actually, the cousin that has a house right now in Huachapan. So he picked me up in Vegas. And he took me to his house in, in Los Angeles. The thing is that when I was getting to LA, I started to see all the dirt and all the garbage and all the bad things that we do to our communities and to our, um, our places. And I was disappointed. I am very honest when I tell this story because I was excited. I mean, I wanted to see the place that I had seen so many times in movies in series and in so many things. But that day was just heartbreaking. When I got to um, the Walk of Fame, see, el, 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 el Paseo de la Fama, or donde están las estrellas, that was just horrible. It was all sticky. It was, it was muddy. It was just bad. Um, I remember I was wearing my best clothes because I, I said to myself, I mean, I'm going to LA. I'm going to the city that I always wanted to visit. So I have to look the best. I was wearing my favorite shoes and I regretted it. I regretted it because it was very dirty. I don't know if you guys have ever had the chance to go there, but um, yeah, my first time in LA, my first time experiencing, you know, the most, one of the most famous cities in the world was not the, was not the best. It was very bad because, um, yeah, como les digo, o sea, eso del paseo de la fama donde están las estrellas y todo eso fue... Horrible, o sea, estaba pegajoso, estaba sucio, estaba, no sé, ruidoso, había chicles, había cervezas, había vómito, había de todo, o sea, yo como que he visto esto tantas veces en las películas, se veía tan hermoso, ¿y por qué se ve así ahora? Entonces, o sea, por eso les digo, ¿verdad? A veces es importante, más que todo para todos aquellos que tenemos el deseo de viajar, de conocer diferentes lugares, tratar de cuidar nuestro lugar. Sí, porque esa gente, la gente que tenía un basural ahí, estaban quemando un montón de basura acerca de, de la calle donde yo pasé, o sea, ellos estaban, como dicen en inglés, ¿verdad? They were going about their day, o sea, no estaban pensando en que, ah, va a pasar alguien aquí que ha soñado en venir a Los Ángeles y va a encontrar este cachimbasal de basura, o sea, y estaba la basura llegando a la carretera y todo. No, ellos no pensaron en eso, ellos estaban pensando en deshacerse de su basura y ya. Entonces, pero a veces siento que eso como que nos hace perder un poco, ¿verdad? Porque imagínense, si nosotros pensásemos un poco en qué tal si alguien, porque uno no sabe más hoy en día con lo famoso que aparentemente se está haciendo en nuestro país, qué tal si alguien del otro lado del mundo, ¿verdad? Piensa y dice, ah, yo quiero visitar El Salvador y que no sé qué. Y cuando venga saliendo del aeropuerto, aquel montón de basura. Yendo, qué sé yo, a Panchimalco, otro montón de basura. Viniendo aquí al tránsito cerca de mi casa, no, nah, tampoco. Ah, mi, mi, hermana, de hecho, mi hermana, de hecho, casi siempre limpia por eso. O sea, de verdad, mi hermana aquí en la, en la cuadra, o sea, nuestra cuadra al menos. Eh, bueno, si soy honesto, es porque también las casas, la mayoría de casas son de mi familia. O sea, hay un montón de casas de mi familia, ¿verdad? Pero las que no son, igual, nosotros casi siempre recogemos basura. Cuando son plásticos, vidrios, cosas así. Porque pues tratamos de pensar en eso, ¿verdad? Más que esta calle es bien transitada porque es el acceso para otra comunidad. Entonces... Um, por lo mismo, o sea, ustedes nunca saben si ahí viene, por ejemplo, el sobrino de alguien y que primera vez que viene acá y eso lo termine decepcionando, porque para mí así fue, o sea, yo llegué a Los Ángeles, llegué a la casa de mi primo y yo me sentía aturdido, o sea, porque no era nada de lo que yo esperaba, era solo ruido, o sea, y era como que, no sé, yo estaba desvelado además, entonces sentía horrible. La, cuando regresé a Minnesota, pues era diferente, ¿verdad? Es un lugar donde pues viven casi solo estadounidenses. Yo, en lo personal, yo ni sabía dónde quedaba Minnesota antes de ir. O sea, a mí me dijeron, vas para Minnesota, yo busqué dónde estaba porque no sabía, no tenía ni idea de dónde era. Entonces, pero ese lugar sí fue muy, muy diferente. O sea, pues la cultura es distinta, ¿sí? Entonces, pero el punto es, 
that sometimes we can make a difference, okay? Like with the things that we do, we can make a difference and we can make somebody's dream come true. Básicamente se convirtió, se convirtió en un consejo, pero <laughs> detalles que sí, o sea, I, I always think of that. Like the, the thing that came through me when I got there, when I saw the city that I had so much dreamed of, of visiting and it was all just a mess. Now, the second time that I went, it was different because that time I had the chance to um, to work. I had a chance to see different places. Uh, and the third time that I went to LA was when I actually fell in love with the city. I know that it's weird, but yeah, the third time. I think it was more because of I was getting homesick because I had to spend, um, by that time, around eight months away from my house. And... Uh, I was seeing family and I was hearing a lot of Spanish and I was um, seeing a lot of like the products from here. So I, I feel like that's what, you know, got me into feeling the city more welcoming. But the experience that I had the first time is the one that has stuck to me and uh, that I feel when I think of that. When I think of dreams or living dreams, I always think of that experience and I always think of how bad it was to be honest but yeah so if we want to travel the world please try to make a difference and also try to clean our world first okay y Jenny va a decir ay yo a mí me están tirando no no es por ustedes por por todos hasta por mí o sea no lo digo solo por ustedes sino por todos verdad los que tenemos um, la responsabilidad pues de cuidar nuestro nuestro pedacito de tierra okay uh, moving on How about Imelda? What is your dream? Imelda dice, I'm going to regnar a mí también. What is your biggest yeah, dream in life, Imelda? It's not good, necessary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, my dream is carry out each of my projects. But beyond that, continue to be happy and grateful despite everything because that gives me peace and let me to be helped for another people, you know. All right, that's great. Yeah, because that is also something that I try to practice sometimes because we never know if we are somebody's last hope, you know. When you're walking on the street and um, you see people that are feeling blue or that are feeling a little bit sad or like they look sad, you don't know if you saying hi to them is going to make a difference. Um, so I normally try to do that. People make fun of me, even my girlfriend. She sometimes um, laughs because when we go for a walk, it's like I am saying hi to almost everyone. Like there is almost every, like when we face people, I'm like, good afternoon. Obviamente en español, verdad? Yeah. <laughs> o sea, que buenas tardes y todo. A veces, like there are people going on, on like cars and everything and they honk and I'm like, bye. And sometimes she asks me, who was that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, mm. I say hi to so many people that now people say hi to me, but I don't know who they are. But yeah, it's like, it's something that happens. Um, I want to become the mayor of my city. And I think that's also part of why I'm doing it because I want the votes. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the thing is that we never know. We never know if we're going to be somebody's, you know, somebody's hope or somebody's um, greatest smile during a day. So if we have the chance to make, or to say something nice to someone else, that's great. So amazing. That sounds like a very, very nice idea, you know. I like the, 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 the people smile. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that makes a big difference. When we give someone a smile, I think we are giving them um, a part of our soul, I will say, because it's something that sometimes is hard. Sometimes people say, when I start this, but like with a with a bad manner, and that doesn't work. With if we do it with a smile, it's different because that will make them feel welcome, and that will make them feel recognized, and that will make a huge, huge difference. So yeah, exactly. great, yeah, great, very nice dream. All right, thank you. How about in your case, um, Leslie? What will be your greatest dream in life? Okay, my biggest dream is to work in an uh, NGO because I study um, international affairs and I am currently doing my um, specialization in migration. So I want to promote the human rights and contribute to the work with my knowledge and also in my free time, <laughs> obviously. And I want to travel around the world. 
and enjoy the life. That's it. Great. That sounds amazing. That sounds very, very nice. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, um, trying to protect human rights. I kind of get to know a lot about that because my sister is really into that. Um, when she started the university, I didn't know much about human rights, but now it's like I have to because my girlfriend is a lawyer and my sister is about to be a lawyer. So it's like, yeah, I'm in the middle there. But the thing is that um, there are some fights that are still or that are yet to be fought when it comes to, um, you know, to defending others, when it comes to giving others what they deserve. So I feel like we need people like that. You know, I think I feel like we need a lot of people that think for others, not only on their own benefit, but also on how this is going to end up um, becoming a benefit for someone else. So I really appreciate, you know, the fact that you have that idea. So hopefully you can make it true. You can make it happen and continue with, um, you know, with a, with a helping mindset because, yeah, that will get us to a different place from where we started because, yeah, I feel like we are, you know, a generation that can transform this world. Every single generation can, but our generation is one that has the chance to do it. And I feel like we must do it. It's like an obligation now. It's not only like a, like a desire. It shouldn't really be a desire. So great. And also the part of, uh, well, traveling the world, who doesn't want to do that nowadays? It's like, of course, we want to get to see so many places. I'm not going to get back into that again because, yeah. Ya va a decir Jenny, ahí va a ir conmigo de nuevo. No. <laughs> yeah, we deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, we, we do, we do. We see so many things, so many places that we deserve to, um, to see them at least once. Um, así que ayúdenme, mándenme dinerito para ir a Suiza. No, just kidding. A ver, vamos a ver. Uh, moving on, the next one. Abby, in your case, what is your greatest or biggest dream in life? Um, have economic stability but maybe maybe middle like a millionaire or something like that but yes have a nice house a car and can travel without a uh, worry about the money and i don't know something like that okay it's the perfect life the perfect life not having too many things on your shoulders it's not like not carrying too much weight but at the same time, you know, having that stability, getting to that point where you don't have to be worried all the time about um, whether or not you're going to have, um, whether or not you're going to have food for tomorrow. And now that you mentioned that, I also wanted to share with you guys that I'm in currently watching. I do, I don't know how you guys watch movies, but in my case, I watch movies like if they were serious. Because normally I don't have like a lot, lot of time at night. I, after the classes, I am sleepy. So it's like, I can watch about 30 minutes in the morning. When I wake up, I watch another 30 minutes. So normally for me to watch a full movie, it will take me like four, I mean, like two days. Um, if I get engaged with the movie, because sometimes I do not get engaged and it's like, yeah, I, I may spend a whole week to watch a single movie. But the thing is that I am watching this movie that is um, named In Time. And I feel like it's very interesting. Like the premise behind the movie is great because it basically works in a world where there is no money, but there is time as currency. Like you pay with time. If you want a coffee, you have to pay. I don't know. The, the best example is that if you want a cup of coffee, you have to pay four minutes. But if you work a full day, you get, if you are like a low wage person, you can get to earn four hours. So think about that. It will be very, very weird. And we will have like a lot on our shoulders if we had to live life like that. But money is very similar to that. Money, we have to fight for it. We have to worry about it. So when, I was, when I'm, I'm watching the movie, because I haven't finished it yet, but when I watch it, I feel like, it's the same idea, you know, money is something that uh, the meaning behind it is basically time. Like we spend our time trying to get the money and then we spend the money trying to get good times. So it's like a, like a vicious cycle. Um, but if you guys have time, if you like movies, I highly recommend that one. It's, as I said, it's um, named In Time. En español no me acuerdo cómo se llama. 
porque sé que escuché el nombre, pero no me acuerdo cómo se llama. Pero en inglés sí estoy seguro que se llama In Time. Está en HBO para aquellos que lo tienen. So, yeah, it's, it's a huge recommendation, honestly. But, um, I mean, reaching that point where you feel okay with what you have and where you don't have too much things to carry is great because that was what I wanted to mention. In the movie, there is one moment where a guy has like a century You know, I, I'm telling you that normally people earn four hours for the day. So it's like just enough for them to come the next day and continue working. And it's it's never like uh, going to go beyond that. Like there are people who live based on a 24 hour um, shift. Like they have only 24 hours available. If they don't work, well, they die. Because if you get to zero, basically you die. Um, so it's just something that, um, as I said, makes you think a lot. But if you have a century, as the example of that guy, um, he's going to have too much on, on, on him as if you were a millionaire. Because if you are a millionaire, of course, you're going to have higher expenses, higher expectations from people. So it's, it's always hard some, with, with, you know, with this kind of things. But well, let's move on. Um, how about Luis? Luis Enriquez, in your time, Luis, I'm sorry, in your time, in your case, What is your uh, biggest dream in life? Yes, good evening. Evening. Basically, I have a lot of dreams in my life, but one of them is to uh, drive my car uh, through Central America, South America, where the target is go to Argentina. Argentina by land yeah, in my car. All right. Starting from here in El Salvador and finish in, in, in Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. They spend the time that have to, to spend in my life. <laughs> But that is one of dream, mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I also, I, 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 uh, I want to visit the country, so uh, uh, my target is to go to the Patagonia and get the the weather cold mm -hmm. and the uh, and also visit all the country of the world. In them, uh, Egypt. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember that yeah. you mentioned that. Before. Yeah, okay. but the the But it seems crazy, but that is my dream. Dream. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, mean, well, it, 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 in driving my car across all the America. Latin America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds nice. Yeah, yeah it sounds like <laughs> a really fun thing to do. Um, I would like to join in. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, those sort of dreams are great because it is possible. I feel like it is very possible. Like if you start getting contacts and all, um, I feel like you can make it, you know. Of course, we need or you will need to save the money and all. But um, apart from that, it's like it's very possible. It will be a great experience. And I am sure that, you know, it will be something that will also change your life like forever. Now, in my case, um, if I am allowed, I would like to share, you know, my biggest dream. It's kind of basic but my biggest dream is to visit different countries i don't dream of traveling the world i dream of visiting some specific countries because i know that traveling the world will will really take a ton of money so i would like to travel so, to some specific countries and gather as many um recipes as i can local recipes of course and start my own restaurant i would love to have a restaurant However, the, all the other part of the dream is that I don't want to have the restaurant here. I would like to have it in Canada. That's the like the only difference. And the reason why is because I feel like, you know, that country, Canada, is very welcoming to like different cultures. Here, we've, I feel like we are not completely ready for that. I feel like if it's, you know, an idea that I, uh, I make um, thinking of a progress or thinking of a success, I will not do it here because we are still a little close to some perceptions or to some things that happen around the world. So I feel like 
it will not work right now. Maybe in a couple of years. In a couple of years, we will be we are going to be more exposed to what happens around the world, and maybe then um, it will work here. But now, if I was able to make my dream come true now, I will do it in a country like Canada. Because I, for all the things that I have read, I have never had the chance to go. But for all the things that I have read, they are very welcoming to um, to like people from abroad. So why not give them more, you know, to their um, to their culture than bringing food from different places of the world and sharing the flavors in a country that has already has many flavors so yeah that will be my dream and of course i wanted to be successful por eso les digo que en canadá y no aquí porque aquí ya me imagino verdad alguien que le den qué sé yo vísceras de algo y es como qué es eso o cucarachas tostadas o sea qué asco entonces en cambio allá siento que seguía así como con más idea verdad que sea más exitoso porque pues sí lo quiero para seguir viajando y seguir teniendo nuevas recetas pero bueno so thank you for the ones that shared your perceptions or your um, ideas. Now, we are going to talk about this. I told you, order of modifiers. So, este tema conste, y esto creo que gran parte de esto lo voy a tratar de explicar en español también, porque este es uno de los temas que más nos genera complicaciones cuando estamos aprendiendo este idioma. Sucede que en inglés hay cosas que son diferentes, ¿verdad? Y esto quizás sea como lo principal que hace que sea diferente a nuestro idioma natal, al, al español. Porque, por ejemplo, nosotros cuando describimos cosas, usualmente lo decimos como el carro rojo, ¿sí? Esa es la forma que tenemos. Colocamos primero al sujeto o al nombre, si lo vamos a, a conocer así, colocamos el nombre y luego colocamos la descripción o los modificadores que este lleva. Entonces decimos primero carro, que es el nombre que vamos a describir, y luego decimos rojo, que sería un modificador de color. Entonces, en inglés eso sucede de forma contraria. Primero vamos a colocar cualquier clase y cantidad de modificadores que necesitemos, y por último vamos a mencionar el nombre. Entonces, esa quizás sea uno de los cambios principales cuando se refiere a la gramática y que es lo que a muchas personas también les genera el pensar que el inglés es, el inglés es enredado. Ahora, otra cosa bien importante cuando se trata de modificadores o más bien, de ahora adelante mejor lo voy a llamar adjetivos porque es lo que son. Cuando se trata de adjetivos, es también bien importante recordar que no está bien visto utilizar más de cuatro. Cuatro ya es como algo bien exagerado, ¿sí? Cuatro adjetivos, o sea, sería para algo que ustedes quieren describir de forma bárbara. En cambio, lo regular vendría siendo tres o dos adjetivos, ¿sí? Tres o dos adjetivos. En este caso, los determiners no los vamos a tomar como adjetivos porque los determiner, determiners simplemente vienen siendo como una descripción previa, como una introducción a lo que vamos a mencionar, ¿ok? Entonces, el determiner no necesariamente... Ahora, los que sí van a ser los de opinión, los de eh, tamaño, edad, eh, forma, color, origen, material y propósito. Esos sí, ¿verdad? Son adjetivos que uh, vamos a tratar de tanto recordar en qué orden van como también limitar la cantidad que vamos a colocar. O sea, que por lo general, como les digo, serían dos, tres, sería como lo básico. Uno, obviamente, es simplemente para dar una descripción rápida de algo. O sea, si yo digo the red car, ya está, ¿verdad? El carro rojo, eso es todo. Yo no dije nada más. Ahora, si yo digo, um, qué sé yo, the red uh, silver car, ¿sí? ¿Qué? Ese no. No. The red titanium car. Ya, yeah, ahí sí. The red titanium car. El problema con silver es que silver funciona también como color, entonces podría ser comple complejo. So the red titanium car. Sí, dije red como color y titanium como material. Y luego car como noun. Entonces, así es como vamos a tratar de ordenar eh, los adjetivos. Ahora, so we have here the determiner. That is the first step. The first one that we're going to cover. The determiner is basically used to inform if the adjective is singular or plural, definite or indefinite, next or far. So those are the main ideas behind the determiner. Los determina determinantes, ustedes creo que ya los conocen, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos que principalmente eh, tenemos 
tres que son como los más básicos, que serían A, en el caso de cuando utilizamos simplemente A, cuando decimos aquí, ¿verdad? A car, sí. Se pronuncia A cuando va antes de una vocal y se pronuncia A cuando va antes de una consonante. En este caso sería a car. People, there are people who say a car. Eh, no está tan mal. Tampoco es que vamos a, a crucificar a alguien que diga a car, pero no es tampoco lo más apropiado, ¿sí? Normalmente decimos a car, no, neces no necesitamos decir a car. Pero si fuese, por ejemplo, um, I don't know. Oh, cierto, cierto, cierto. No es con consonante y vocal, perdón. Es con eh, sonidos fuertes. Esa era la cosa. Es con sonidos fuertes, ¿sí? Porque para eso existe, para las consonantes y las vocales, existe la diferencia de an, ¿sí? An, que sería el que utilicemos cuando son vocales. En cambio, a se va a utilizar, por ejemplo, si tuviésemos eh, sonidos fuertes como la p, la t, la r, ¿sí? En esos casos decimos... Um, I don't know, a purse, ¿sí? A purse. No decimos a purse, sino a purse. O si no, qué sé yo, a roast beef slice. A roast beef slice. Entonces, utilizamos a para eh, básicamente introducir sonidos fuertes y a para todo el resto de sonidos que son considerados sonidos un poco más leves. Now, with... Um, Singular nouns that have an, uh, what you might call it, a vocal at the beginning, we're going to use an. Okay, so all singular names that have a vocal at the beginning is going to be an. Ahora, estos son indefinite, ¿sí? Eso es otra cosa importante. Eso es algo que en muchas ocasiones a nosotros nos pasa por encima, ¿verdad? Estos son determinadores eh, indefinidos. Porque aquí estamos diciendo a car or an apple, ¿sí? Y estamos hablando casi que en general, o sea, no estamos necesariamente apuntando de forma directa o señalando de forma directa cuál carro ni cuál manzana. Entonces, eso es algo que siempre se debe recordar. Now, when we have definite, que son los definitivos, que son aquellos que eh, también vienen siendo un poco más focalizados en el objetivo, sería the book, ¿sí? The book. So in this case, we are saying el libro, so the book. It means that both speakers or all speakers involved in the conversation know what book we are making reference of. Therefore, um, they're going to be sure of what book we are referring to. So the book. Then we have the flowers. Um, remember, the can be used with um, singulars and plurals. This one is also pronounced as the if we have a vocal. En este caso, sí, ¿verdad? Si se, se haría esa diferencia, we can say the, the alphabet, the apple. So we say the when we have a vocal as the next letter. So the book, the flowers. Um, this one is the one that we use also with plurals because in the, in the case of plurals, of course, we cannot say a flowers because that will mean in Spanish una flores, so that doesn't make sense. Therefore, we have to say the flowers, which means las flores. Now, we have these other um, more composed, more build-up determiners that are these men. In this case, we are being, being very straightforward into pointing out who we are referring to. So we say these men. Um, we also have that woman, or sorry, that woman, that woman. Um, so once again, we're being very specific. Now, in this case, the difference will be that this man is for someone that is next to you or close to you, and that will be used for someone who is far from you. So this man and that woman. Now, we also have these computers and those teachers. These computers and those teachers. These ones are used for plurals. You know that these is used for things that are close to you, things that are not necessarily next to you, but close to you, and those is used for things that are far from you or away from you. So these are the determiners. Now, the opinion. Now, an opinion adjective explains what you think about something. Other people may not agree with you. Examples. Silly, 
beautiful, horrible, difficult. Opinion are basically all the adjectives that we use to describe how something looks or feels in our opinion, in our perception. So those are basically some of the uh, adjectives that you can use. Silly, beautiful, horrible, and difficult. So it's something that you perceive. It's your perception. It's your opinion. Therefore, um, other people, as uh, the explanation says, may not agree with you. They maybe feel like, um, you know, that thing might not be silly. That the thing that you're mentioning might not be beautiful in their perception. It might not be horrible. So it's, as previously stated, an opinion. Then we have size. Now, a size adjective, of course, tells you how big or small something is. It's very simple, right? It's very, very simple. So you say large, tiny, enormous, little. It depends on where or how you're going to describe the size. But yeah, size is, as its name states, to refer to um, how big or small something ends up being. Now we have the age. Now, when it comes to age, we have an age adjective tells you how young or old something or someone is. So once again, very straightforward, how young or old someone or something is. So we have ancient, we have new, we have young, and we have old. Now, the difference here is going to be that with people, we cannot use uh, adjectives like ancient and new. You can use ancient um, if you're joking, maybe, if you have like confidence with the person, but you cannot use it with people you don't know or if it's not like um, an agreement between the two of you. So you cannot use the word ancient with people, neither the word new. Young and old are, of course, um, designed to describe people. And also you can use them for things. So young and old can be used for things as well. Now, it comes a shape. A shape of adjective describes the shape of something. So here we are also coming into a territory that is very self-explanatory, very easy to understand. Um, we have that um, some things are square, some things are round, some, some things are flat, some things are rectangular. So the shape, okay, what is a characteristic? What is a, a highlight on the shape of that thing that you can mention so that you know, the description of it makes it easier to find. So the shape. Um, moving on, we have one of the most common ones that we use, and I feel like it's basically the most commonly used, and it will be the color. Now, a color adjective, of course, describes the color of something. So that's what it does. It basically uses states what the color of something is. So um you can use a, as many colors as possible or any of the colors you know remember or use and it's gonna be okay because here the examples that we have are blue pink reddish and gray so very simple right when it comes to color you can pick from all the selection of colors that exist in the language then we have the origin now, the origin ref uh, or an origin adjective describes where something comes from. Okay, en este caso, aquí hay, hay una, digamos, algo que aclarar entre el origen y el material, ¿sí? Porque en, cuando hablamos de origen y material, a veces podría llegar a ser confuso. Eh, por ejemplo, si yo dijese en algún momento, wooden, I don't know, a wooden chair, ¿sí? Una silla de madera. Alguien podría llegar a pensar que el wooden se va a entender como origen, porque pues algunas personas dicen, ¿verdad? La madera o el, el eh, la madera viene del de árbol y luego la silla viene de la madera. Entonces, el origen de la silla es la madera. Pero en este caso, lo vamos a desentender de esa forma y el origen se va a colocar directamente como algo territorial, o sea, como algo de localidad y no necesariamente como el español nos podría permitir, ¿verdad?, utilizar la palabra origen, porque pues a veces podemos decir, oh sí, de, de ese trozo de hierro podemos originar, eh, qué sé yo, 10 varillas, entonces, y pues el español hasta cierto punto permite la utilización de la palabra de esa forma, en ese caso no, 
el origen va a ser directamente para describir eso, la locación donde algo fue encontrado o de donde algo proviene. So, origin. All right. So, in terms of origin, of course, as I said, we describe where something comes from and we can use French, Lunar, American, Eastern, or Greek. It depends on where the thing comes from and you can use it then as an explanation for it. Where do you use lunar, sorry? Uh, for lunar rocks, for example. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for lunar rocks. It means that, you know, it's just an example to make it broader, to have like a, like a wider idea and knowing that you can also use locations from outer space. So, yeah, you can also refer, for example, to meteorites. So it's a meteoric, meteoric, meteoric rock. It can be meteoric rock. Mm -hmm. Una eh, roca, roca me de un meteorica. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um... Or what? We can say Martian soil, soil, Martian soil, it means uh, suelo marciano, so yeah, or de Marte. So yeah, it's like uh, to describe that, you know, to describe locations outside of the world as well. So uh, next one up, the material. A material adjective describes what something is made uh, from. So there is where you use um, the material and where you can use wood, metal, cotton, and paper. So, in the case of something that is made of wood, you cannot say, or I mean, you should not say um, exactly that. El de es que muchas personas siento que cometemos el error, porque yo solía hacerlo bastante también, eh, que nos atreve, no nos atrevemos a utilizar la palabra wooden cuando se trata de describir cosas que están hechas de madera. Sí. Entonces, yo solía decir, oh, it's a table made out of uh, wood. Sí, y es como el que lo más común, ¿verdad? Made out of, es hecha de, made out of wood. Funciona, por eso fue que me retraté también de decirles eh, que you cannot, o sea, sería más el you should not, que no deberíamos decirlo. Sí podemos, pero no deberíamos decirlo así. O sea, no deberíamos decir, ¿verdad? Eh, a, what, a chair made out of wood. Porque pues, eso significa literalmente una silla hecha de madera, sí. Pero al utilizar la palabra wooden, se entiende directamente eso, ¿verdad? Wooden chair would mean that it's a chair made out of wood. Entonces, eh, quitarnos a veces quizás esa costumbre, si la tenemos, porque les digo, a muchas personas, eh, yo he escuchado que nos pasa eso, entonces, dejarlo de lado, ¿verdad? Ya no decir made out of uh, wood o made out of metal, sino que simplemente decir wooden, en el caso de las cosas hechas con madera, y metal to the things that are made out of uh, metal, Cotton to the things that are made out of cotton. Normally, where when we use cotton, it's going to be for things like um, clothing. Uh, and paper, of course, very easy to know, right? When something is made out of paper. So, yeah. And now, the last one. It's the purpose adjective. So, when we talk about purpose adjectives, estos quizás sean casi como que de los, de los más eh, comunes y a la misma vez difíciles, en cierto modo. So, Uh, when we describe or an adjective, a purpose adjective describes that something is used for, ¿sí? Cuando describimos, ¿verdad? Que algo se utiliza para hacer esto o lo otro. Now, these adjectives often end in ing. Ahora, aquí está la parte compleja, ¿verdad? Que, um, a ver. Podríamos utilizar... Esto, sí, y esto es donde entra la, a jugar lo de los gerundios que les mencionaba hace unas clases. Porque la palabra sleep, sabemos que en inglés es un verbo, es el verbo dormir. Pero ¿por qué aquí yo lo estoy utilizando como adjetivo? Bueno, al estar este ya conjugado en su forma del participio del presente, o sea, sleeping, ya puedo utilizarlo como un adjetivo, principalmente si yo lo utilizo eh, al lado de un nombre, ¿sí? Y claro, no al lado en, en cualquier lado, sino justo detrás de un nombre. Ahora, un ejemplo que podríamos tener con esto podría ser I forgot to bring my sleeping bag. I forgot to bring my sleeping bag. En este caso, ya sleeping queda completamente liberado del peso de funcionar como verbo 
porque el verbo de la oración que yo acabo de decir sería forgot, sí, I forgot, que sería olvidé, ¿verdad? I forgot to bring. Ahora, esa es una, una phrasal phrase, una, perdón, una verbal phrase, es una verbal phrase, porque pues tenemos dos verbos incluidos, ¿verdad? Forgot to bring, sí, I forgot to bring, pero... El verbo principal sería forgot, porque es la acción que yo realicé que sería olvidar. So, I forgot. Sí, forgot to bring uh, my sleeping bag. Entonces, sleep ya ni por cerca va a tener el peso, ¿verdad?, de funcionar como verbo, sino que queda libre de ello y simplemente va a funcionar como una descripción de para qué se utilizará esa bolsa. Entonces, si yo digo simply, I forgot to bring my bag, Podría entenderse como si estamos hablando acerca de la mochila, ¿sí? Podría entenderse como si estamos hablando acerca de una bolsa con comprados. Podría entenderse como si estamos hablando acerca de una bolsa eh, para basura. Entonces, my bag is too narrow. But if you say a sleeping bag, that is way, way better and it's way more specific because now people know that what you're referring to is something that you need just so you can sleep in it. So yeah, sleeping bag. Now, another example, roasting. As in roasting tin. Roasting tin. So roasting, um, the verb that we use to refer to um, cooking with, oh, cooking with, um, with fire or cooking on a, on, a, on a roaster. So yeah, roasting tin. Ahora bien, entonces, sabiendo esto, ¿Cómo debemos ordenar eh, los adjetivos a la hora de generar oraciones? Vamos a empezar con la parte divertida, ¿verdad? La parte en la que ustedes van a empezar a crear oraciones eh, donde coloquemos tres adjetivos al menos y o dos, depende, dos o tres adjetivos siguiendo este orden, ¿sí? Este es el orden que tenemos que seguir. Ahora, ustedes deciden cuáles adjetivos utilizar por ejemplo, una oración podría ser um, This is a beautiful red carpet. This is a beautiful red carpet. Well, this is a beautiful red... Um, wool carpet. This is a beautiful red wool carpet. ¿Sí? Sería, esta es una hermosa... Cara, es carpet. Es una hermosa alfombra roja hecha de um, de lana sí hecha de lana entonces en español funciona muy distinto eso es una cosa que de verdad siempre tenemos que tratar de sacarnos de la cabeza que en español va a sonar muy 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 distinto no tratemos nunca nunca de traducir de forma literal como sonaría en español porque en español si yo lo digo o sea va a ser bien bien diferente verdad o sea si yo digo esta es una alfombra roja hecha de lana o sea, yo tendría que decir, this is a red carpet made out of um, wool. Pero en inglés, o oh, bueno, this is a beautiful red woolen carpet. Así fue lo que dije, ¿verdad? This is a beautiful red woolen carpet. Entonces, en español tendría que decir algo como, esta es una hermosa alfombra roja hecha de lana, ¿sí? Pues eso ya hace que la oración sea bastante, bastante más compleja. Y a la hora de traducirlo al inglés, lo mismo, ¿verdad? Vamos a estar agregando... Eh, componentes que no son necesarios. Entonces, mejor confiar solo en utilizar estas palabras y no agregar, ¿verdad? Nada extra, sino que confiar en, en lo que estamos aprendiendo. Ahora, como les digo, quisiera ver que ustedes creen al menos um, una oración cada uno. And I would like to hear how do you guys um, establish these sentences following the order that we are supposed to follow for determiners. Oh, y si por si surgía la duda, en español, honestamente, yo he tratado de averiguar si existe, pero no he tenido éxito. En cuanto al tratar de averiguar si existe una, un orden específico, así como en inglés. O sea, en inglés esto básicamente o sea, ya está verdad, estipulado, que ese es el orden que se va a seguir cuando vamos a incluir adjetivos. Pero en español, en lo personal, no conozco si exista esta, esta definición o esta división. Um, pero bueno, en español yo siempre siento que, o sea, que los adjetivos a veces están aquí y luego al final de la oración están otros adjetivos que simplemente terminan de describir o de dar la explicación de lo que estábamos diciendo antes. Así que por eso mismo es que a veces me quedo ¿verdad? con esos 
espacios grises a la hora de definir dónde o cómo colocar los adjetivos en nuestro idioma. Pero bueno, ejemplos, examples you guys may have. Yes, Imelda. Be careful you send us the, that by WhatsApp. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And right. I have an example. Mm -hmm. uh, I can understand that French old book. No, sorry, old French book. I can understand that old French book. All right, great, because yes, we first mentioned the age and then the origin. So I can't understand that old French book. Great, very, very good. Let me see if I can send that sentence through the chat so that we can also have it as a reference. So I can or can't, sorry? Can't. Can't. Okay, I can't understand that French, I mean that old French book. All right. So, anyone else with an example? I have a horrible gray American jacket. Okay, one second. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I have a horrible, a horrible gray American jacket. A horrible gray American jacket. Wait, it's American. American jacket. All right, so I have a horrible gray American jacket. Nice, that sounds nice. Um, because yeah, we have first the opinion, then the color, and then the origin. So nice, very nice. All right, any other example you guys may have? Maybe Gabriela, Gabriela mm. Cortez. Okay, or Gabriela Garcia then. She dressed up with a huge old pink sweater. She dressed up with a huge old pink dress, did you say? Pink sweater. Oh, sweater. No sé dónde saqué el dress, pero bueno. So she dressed up with a huge old pink sweater. Okay. Um, ahora, en este caso, por ejemplo, como les digo, ¿verdad? no siempre, y esa es la parte importante, no siempre, aquí solo es porque estamos haciendo los ejemplos, vamos a tener que utilizar tres modifiers. Lo mejor sería para esta oración que solo fuesen dos. Sí, she dressed up with a old pink sweater. Sí, old pink sweater. Tal vez la parte del huge no sea tan necesaria para una misma oración. Eso lo podríamos agregar en una oración distinta, o sea, o como un comentario aparte. Podríamos agregarlo como una class, ¿verdad? Una, una adjective class. Y podríamos decir, oh, and it was huge. Sí, entonces, eh, podría funcionar mejor así. En lugar de, de, de hacer la complicación, ¿no? de tener la complicación de agregar tres de una vez. Y por eso es que no se aconseja, ¿verdad? El pasar de cuatro. O sea, utilizamos cuatro en casos, como les digo, caso ex, casos extremos, donde de verdad estamos tratando de ser, o prestar atención al más mínimo detalle a la hora de explicar algo. Entonces, por eso mismo, es recomendable quedarnos con dos y máximo, máximo tres um, adjetivos por oración. O sea, podríamos hacerlo, como les digo, pero ya como un agregado, como un comentario extra, como en una oración o un, una um, clause aparte. Bueno, any other example? Uh, maybe, Abby, do you have any examples? Sure. For... Yes, oh, Jose. Oh, 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 yeah. I said tengo una duda, este, estaba pensando en a uh, white, uh, perdón, a big, a big, eh, a big, 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 a a big, Dijo a big white shark, o dijo algo más en medio. Ah, no le escuché ahorita. <ríe> bueno, pero si, si, si es simplemente a big white shark, no cuenta el white necesariamente como parte de, 
um, del nombre. O sea, es cierto que regularmente nos referimos a, a ellos como white sharks, pero el white siempre va a ser un adjetivo. ¿sí? Lo que pasa es que en este caso es un adjetivo que es parte ya del noun, pero siempre es un adjetivo, así que en este, eh, sería, ¿verdad? Siempre un adjetivo si dijésemos um, there is or I, I see or I saw a big white shark. Entonces, eh, siempre iría contando. Vamos a ponerlo así. Um, shark. Entonces, aquí el white siempre sería, ¿verdad? Como mencionaba, parte de los, um, del adjetivo. Así como tenemos, por ejemplo, el hammer shark. Eso es, o sea, la palabra hammer eh, viene siendo como una descripción de... Eh, en este caso sería una descripción de shape, ¿sí? El shape, porque pues es la forma que se supone que tiene, ¿verdad? La forma de un martillo. So, hammer shark sería un, um, por ejemplo, si yo quisiese agregar tres adjetivos, sería um, I saw a beautiful old hammer shark. Sí, a beautiful old hammer shark. Entonces, tres adjetivos ya contando y podríamos, ¿verdad? En ese caso utilizar la palabra hammer como un tercer adjetivo. Igual, tampoco es que vamos a quedarnos eh, siempre con la idea de que, oh, es necesario poner dos, es necesario poner tres. No. Lo que más quiero que se quede, la idea que más quiero que se quede grabada es el orden en el que van a ir colocados eh, los adjetivos. No necesariamente el poner tres, el poner dos, o sea, eso no hace que, que sea importante, sino en los casos en los que pongamos dos, ¿en qué orden van a ir esos dos adjetivos? Eso es básicamente lo que vamos a tratar de seguir um, practicando y pues que ya va a tener que ser el día de mañana because today we ran out of time. So yeah, I will send you guys this table in just a minute um, through the chat. So yeah, I'm sure that you guys get it. Um, so thank you guys very much for your attention in this evening's class. I hope that um, you have an amazing rest of your night And also, I um, am very hopeful that I will see you here tomorrow again. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye for Bye. now. Bye. Bye. Bye.